Hi and welcome back to Normski TV. Uh, it's been a while, a few days. Um, and yeah, um, we're here to preview the game um, tomorrow. Villarreal against Arsenal. Um, first leg of the Europa semi-finals. And man, this is a massive, massive game. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, after um, the Everton debacle um, where we ended up losing that game 1-0, not that Everton really played well. Um, we were obviously the better team, but we just did not take our chances. But all in all, the game was absolutely a drab game. Both sides were terrible. Um, and if you wanted to pick the best of a bad punch, we were better. But how on earth is Leno letting in that goal from that angle? You know, this guy needs to be dropped. And if it was me, I know it ain't going to happen. I will just drop him and start Ryan. Um, um, what's the name uh, for this, this game? Ryan, is it Ro Matt Ryan, Ryan for this game? I was going to say Ryan Parker. Matt Ryan for this game. Um, I don't know what's going on with Leno um, these days. Um, his um, concentration level just literally just gone out the window and he's making too many high profile mistakes and this was just a massive one. And, you know, a game, you know, just before um, we go into this Villarreal game, you want to go in there with some positivity and you're doing that. Just wasn't good all round. And I didn't do a, a, a player ratings or review. I was just that upset. I just couldn't be bothered. So sorry about that, guys, um, if I didn't actually come up with that also apologies for not doing the um the what's going on podcast it's just really been difficult trying to get the guys together but hopefully in the future when things settle down you know we can have more of a regular uh conversation during that podcast but listen tomorrow is the one you know as i say we we, we are playing Villarreal. um unai emery our ex-manager we're going to be up against him you know i think they've done a press conference with him a pre-match press conference and uh, I haven't seen it yet so I don't really know the ins and outs of what has been said I listened to a little bit of the Arteta pre-match press conference and uh, yeah going into this game some real good news in terms of injury we have four players in contention um, coming back into the side with a possibility of starting now I can't see if that happens but the four players that are in contention is Aubameyang Kieran Tierney, who I thought was going to not even see um, another football or kick another ball um, this side of this season, but he's in contention according to Arteta, Lacazette, and um, obviously David Luiz. So that is really great um, if it's only just for um, the mindset and the mentality of the team going into this game. It's good to know that these guys are in contention. And to be honest, listen, I don't really see the likes of Bamiang, who's just, you know, coming out um, from, um, you know, his uh, malaria sickness and, uh, you know, whether his body's going to be up for it, we don't know. Um, didn't see him in training or even Lacazette or Quirantini. But as I said, Arteta is saying that, you know, um, you know, these guys are in contention. I mean, even if it's there, they're on the bench, then that would be good. I mean, the likely person that will probably start is Lacazette because obviously he had a bit of a fire strain um, in the uh, game before the Fulham game. And, uh, you know, he ended up limping off. So, you know, we was looking at a few weeks out, but it looks like he's back. And hopefully um, Arteta will start him tomorrow. Um, if not, then, you know, you'll be going for the likes of Martin Martinelli to start. I don't want to see Eddie and Ketty up front. Cannot be happening. Not on not on my watch anyway. <laughs> but listen, Arteta is one that picks a side he knows best. And uh, obviously he had an interesting pre-match press conference today. A lot of questions. It was dominated, obviously, to do with the Cronkies and the fact that, um, you know, the whole situation with um, Daniel Ek, um, the um, Spotify owner who is now looks like he's secured the funds to try and buy um, Arsenal. Now, the Cronkies have come out in a statement to say they have no intention of selling any stake in the Arsenal and uh, that they want to forge forward with, um, you know, their plans for Arsenal. They're going to be some big plans. Now, look, I've heard it all before. Um, this has been going on too long, 10 years. You know, the fans have to still keep the pressure on. 
the fans have to keep the pressure on because I do not trust these guys. Um, you know, obviously with um, Daniel Ek coming in, obviously with the Invincibles, he was asked about that question, the fact that the Invincibles are going to be, you know, backing this guy and getting into bed with him. How would that, how does that make him feel? And Arteta was obviously being very, um, uh, very quay with his, you know, um, with his, with his words. And, uh, to say the least, you know, it seems like he's, he's he's backing the owners. I mean, when you listen to him, it looks like he's backing the owners and that's probably because they promised him that, look, whatever happens, you're going to still have a job. So you can't talk against them. And he's basically was saying, look, look, give them a chance. You know, if they had a chance to speak to the fans. I mean, one of the, the reporters asked him, you know, um, is there a chance that the um, Stan will come and talk to the fans? And, and Arteta said, well, if it's required. But listen, it's not about if it's required. He needs to be seen. Silent Stan, invisible Stan, whatever you want to call him. He needs to face up and front up in front of the fans and tell us what is going on. Now it's all right saying you've got plans for the future and for the 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 um the uh, the summer and all that. Um, it, you know it's it's gone too far. And as I said, well done to those fans that went out last Friday and protested. Absolutely brilliant to see, you know, the, oh, fans coming together in unity against these owners. And uh, listen, we need to keep the pressure on. Absolutely need to keep the pressure on. Um, but it obviously looks like Arteta is um, publicly backing these guys and he's saying, give them a chance. Um, and I, I don't know. I just hope that, um, you know, this Daniel Ek will, will force through this move. You know what I mean? Even though, you know, um, Stan is saying that, it, you know, KSC, their company is saying that they have no intention, but it depends on what kind of offer that, um, you know, this Daniel Ek will put down. And I'm hoping it is a good one, decent one. You know, the club is currently, I think, Valued at around about 1.82 billion, 1 1.8 to 2 billion pounds. Um, now, whether Arteta, not Arteta, sorry, Stan thinks that's a good offer. Who knows? I think he's going to probably want a little bit more. So it all really depends. In the next few weeks, we'll know how serious this is. And I just hope that, you know, maybe the government can, you know, get involved as well and maybe try and see if we can force these guys out because they really have taken Arsenal down the wrong road. Listen, you're talking about wanting to win trophies and, and, and be big. For 10 years, we are only going in one direction. Right now, we're sitting in 10th. We're in, you know, we're, we're, we're scrabbling and squabbling with, with um, teams around us like um, Aston Villa, Leeds above us. Do you know what I mean? Crystal Palace, 10th, the big, mighty Arsenal. It's just not on. And I know this is a, a match preview and a predicted lineup, but I have to talk about this because it's absolutely important and essential that, um, you know, um, the, the fans keep the pressure on, the government keeps the pressure on, social media, whatever it is it's going to take to get these guys out. Um, and hopefully they will fold under the pressure and we'll have uh, hopefully a new owner. This is going to rumble on. It's going to rumble on. Um, Daniel X said he's going to keep the pressure on. Um, he's, he's been speaking to the American media and he's saying he's, he's secured the funds. He's like worth uh, um, around about 3.6, 3.8 billion pounds. Um, you know, he, he's obviously one of the founder, founders of Spotify who has, um, uh, some, he's worth something around, around about 59 billion. So it's a lot of money. Um, but he says that um, he's, he's, he's willing um, to, to go all the way, you know, however long it takes, he, he's willing to go all the way. I'm just trying to find some uh, quotes in, in here uh, of what he actually said. So I, I don't want to be misquoting him. He goes, I've secured the funds for it and I want to bring a very compelling offer to the owners and I hope they, are, they hear me out. I certainly did not expect this will happen overnight and I'm prepared for this to be a long journey. So listen, Daniel, I hope this is the case, mate. I hope it is a long journey. You keep piling the pressure on um, and hopefully the Cronkies, KRC, will 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 um, crack under the pressure and hopefully give in. And so that is the plan. So I'm not going to go into more any more details. About it. I'm going to actually go and watch the rest of the press um, uh, or, or the actual um, interview with... Um, um, Daniel Ek with, um, I think it was C CBN, uh, I think it was news. And uh, he, he was obviously laying out his plans and proposal about how he would go at, about, you know, buying um, Arsenal. Now, um, as I said, uh, we've got this big game tomorrow. Um, the boost of having um, these four players back 
as I said, not to say that they're going to start the game, but it's just good to know that they're going to be in and around the club. So that's really good news to hear. Uh, and uh, just talking about, um, you know, in terms of our head-to-head -head with um, Villarreal, we have got a good head-to-head -head record with them. Um, they have not, they've never beaten us. Um, we've, um, back in 2000, I uh, believe in 2006, we won 1-0. This was when we was playing in the Champions League. This is when we was playing in the Champions League. We won 1-0 um, at home to them. And then uh, we drew away to them in uh, the, the following week, um, nil nil and obviously we went through to the next round um then we obviously had another um meeting with them back in 2009 7th of april where we drew 1-1 with them um away and then so you know listen there's a chance that we can get uh an away goal um i'm going to talk about the you know our players in terms of the youth, the youth in our team compared to Villarreal, they have got quite an age inside. Capoo's in there, Coquelin, Francis Coquelin. You remember Francis Coquelin? These are the guys that we could be likely to be facing. Um, but listen, nevertheless, they are still a dangerous side. You know, they've got Unai Emery who knows how to win games. You know, he's won the Europa League three times, three times, been in a number of semi-finals. So this guy knows his stuff and he's going to want to get his revenge on Arsenal. Um, and then just going back to the head to head, we beat them at home 3 0, and obviously we went through again um, to um, the following um, round. So, you know, in terms of our head to head, we, we have got a good record against them, and hopefully we can continue that record against them, and uh, then we'll see what happens. Um, as I, I talked about a few of their players that they've got, they have got a dangerous um, <clears throat> uh, midfielder, Samuel Chibuzu, who scored. Um, Scored against them, um, uh, scored against Barcelona, um, <clears throat> where um, yeah, they got they got the first goal, but Barcelona did end up coming back and winning that game two one. They did have a player sent off, um, but um, he is a dangerous player. He's going to obviously be playing as a right midfielder. So it depends on who plays at that left back position because I don't see Kieran starting. If it's Cedric Suarez or is it going to be um, Granite Xhaka? You know, you're going to be up against a, a, quite a pacey guy. He's, he's quite, he's quite young. He's only, I think, he's only about 21. So, you know, we 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 got to make sure that we've got that side pretty much locked down. Yes, it gives us balance because Granite Shack is left foot. But what I saw him do um, up against Ricarlison and get left for dead, um, you, you just can't have that. You just cannot have that. Um, and so, you know, uh, these guys are no push-off. They have scored quite a few goals. They're currently lying seventh um, in La Liga and they do score a lot of goals. They, albeit it is La Liga, but they do score a lot of goals. And um, it's it's going to be a tough game. So it's no push-off. We're not just going to go over there. It's not going to be no push-over. They do know how to score goals. As I said, they've got um, um, Unai Emre as their manager. But in their last two games, obviously they lost to Barcelona um, at home and then they also lost to Alves 2-1 uh, as well. Um, so their records, you know, and their form has been kind of up and down. But then our form is the same, if not worse. So, you know, you know, drawing against Fulham, who like bottom basement team, you know, only got a last minute goal from Eddie and Ketia, um to equalise, and then losing against Everton, who've you know beaten us. Now. It's the first time they've beaten us in 25 years. The last time they beat us was in 1996. Arteta is breaking records: 13 losses, seven um, home defeats. Last time we did that was in 1993. It, 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 it could have been worse. I don't even know the actual. I don't even know the actual um, actual details, but I could be wrong. I'll put it in the chat in, or in the chat or in the comments and let me know. But we're breaking records. Arteta is breaking records left, right, and centre. But as I say, tomorrow is absolutely massive. I can't stress it anymore. If we can go there, um, keep it tight, nick that one goal maybe, uh, you know, two goals to bring it back to the Emirates. You know, you know, if we've got the likes of um, Odegaard, who is who's obviously could start, um, and if Aubameyang doesn't start, you know, there's a chance that he may will play um, Smith or out on the left, you know, um, Saka on the right. But then Pepe misses out. So this is the thing. Or do you put Saka at left back, wing back, it depends on what system he goes for. Um, or does he leave Odegaard on the bench and play um, Smith Rowe in the hole, plays Pepe on the left, Saka on the right. And obviously, I'm hoping that Lacazette will be fit. Lacazette up front. If not, 
it's got to be Martinelli. It cannot be Eddie Nketiah. No way, can do. No way, absolutely no way. So, um, you know, <clears throat> it's um, going to be interesting in terms of the the, the team news and team selection. Um, for, but for me, um, you know, in terms of who starts tomorrow and who's obviously fit, um, let's go, let's start with the back four. Uh, let's start with the back four. Um, now, right, this, listen, okay. In, in the centre back, yeah, I would stick with Pablo Marie and Holding as a centre back pairing. They've, uh, they've been quite, doing quite well together. Um, they seem to be form forming quite a good um, bond there. And, um, you know, for me, you know, Pablo Marie he, he's very calm, obviously carries that leadership quality there. So I would start, and I know David Luiz is back, but it might be just a bit too early for him to come back. So I would look at the centre-back pairing of Pablo Marie and Holding. Now, at right back, you see, um, I, I like Chambers. I do like Chambers because he's very good going forward. Um, and he links up well with either Saka or Pepe, depending on who's playing there. I would, I would, I, I seriously, I would start with um, Chambers at right back. I would seriously start with Chambers at right back. Now, for the left back position now, um, it's trying to get that balance. Um, and, you know, if we haven't got a fit left back and Kieran Tierney, I doubt if he's going to start, he will probably on the, be on the bench. But so, just for caution sake, so if anything does go wrong, then maybe you can bring him on because you don't want to bring him on and then he breaks down and then we lose him for the rest of the season. Um, do you know what? I would just go with Cedric, Cedric Suarez at left back. I will go with him at left back um, and then bring Granit Xhaka back into the centre alongside Thomas Partey. That's what I would do, personally speaking. Um, and then, obviously, the, 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 the three up front in terms of the midfield, I would go with... Um, I would go with uh, Sack on the right, uh, Smith Rowe in the hole, uh, Pepe on the left, and if Lacazette is fit, I'll go with Lacazette up front. If he ain't fit, then I'll go with Martinelli. Obviously, goalkeeper, listen, I'd like to see Matt Ryan in there. That's who I would put in there, but we know what's going to happen. It's going to be Leno. If he has another one of those blunders, mate, I'll tell you what, because right now, the guy... He's not, he's, there's no way he's world class. This guy's not world class. He's just an average keeper for me. Um, you know, we lost uh, Martinez. You know, Matt Ryan for me just seems more assured. You know what I mean? I know we haven't seen much of him, but listen, he was the one that went up and uh, got the pre assist uh, um, for Eddie, Eddie Nketiah to um, get the equaliser against Fulham. So listen, it, it is what it is. Um, Arteta is probably going to obviously go um, with probably Granit Xhaka at left back and God forbid if he starts Eddie and catch it up front please you cannot be doing that um, and then as I said the people are not going to be on the bench I mean if he takes them over brings them over even if, even if it's just for moral boosts you know what I mean I'm kind of I think that would help the team so you've got you know um, Bami and Kieran in the side you know Kieran Tini is a winner you know, he's he's a, a leader, captain, you know, Captain Scott, Scotland, Captain Scotland, not Captain America, Captain Scotland. Yeah, my, my, my Scottish accent is not that brilliant, but anyway. So, um, in terms of prediction, um, we will get, I think we'll do, we will get a goal. Um, what can I see? If we can, if we can come back to the Emirates with, an away goal, that would be great. Um, so, personally speaking, I'm going to put my neck out. I'm going to be brave. And I'm going to go with a 2-1 to the Arsenal. That's what I think the predicted score is going to be for tomorrow, which will be absolutely brilliant. Um, because then it means that, obviously, when they um, come to the Emirates, yes, they would have to score uh, two goals. Uh, we'll be playing our own uh, on our own um, pitch, playing at home. But our record at home has not been brilliant. As I said, we've lost so many games at home in all competitions. It's just not great at all. And Arsenal need to butt their riders yeah, coming up to that. 
Um, it's going to be exciting. Hopefully, I will be doing a watch along. I'm going to try and see if I can get somebody on. I don't know, Tom, I'm calling you out, mate. Mr. Strong, if you want to come on this watch along, mate, you need to get that link and get on the show and watch it. It'll be on BT Sport. If there's anybody that wants to come on the watch along with me, let me know. Put it in the comments and we'll see what we can do. Uh, but it'd be good to have, um, you know, be watching the game with somebody else um, and just, you know, have that moral um, support. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, because it is going to be, it's going to be tough, but I am, I don't want to say quietly confident, but I do think we will get um, two goals and I do think we will come away from there winning 2-1. And hopefully that'll be one foot you never know. Um, in the finals because we do need to get back into Europe and one thing Cronkies out please like subscribe and share and hopefully I will see you tomorrow on the watch along take care